I invite everyone to stand up. We're going to open up our Bibles and the Gospel according to John. John chapter 20. John 20 from verse 19. John 20, 19 says the following. Then the same day at the evening, being the first day of the week, when the door were doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he said that he said had said this, he showed uh, them his hands and his and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father had sent me, I also sent you. And when he had uh, said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, then I will forgive them then they are forgiven them. If uh, you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas called the, the two, one of them, twelve, was uh, not with the, them when Jesus came. Then the other uh, disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. And, uh, and 26, after and after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. The Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your fingers here, and look at my hands, and reach your hand here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe, believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to, to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who are not seen and yet have believed. My brethren, we will see it throughout the history of the church, together with the church. We're going to see that the Lord, He always the intention of God was to reveal Himself to man. God now, in the beginning, He chooses a group, a small group, a man, a family, and from this family it becomes a nation. God now begins to operate in the midst of this people, of this nation, in order to show to the remaining, to show to the other nations, that the God of Israel was the only living God. God now begins to operate in Israel in order to show that if man would be able to begin to depend on God, begin to trust in God, man would receive the blessings from God. Because the only way for man to find joy in his life the only way for man to find a way for, for man to live in comfort, in peace, is to have God as the God of that person's life. And God now begins to operate in Israel, demonstrating His power, demonstrating His faithfulness, demonstrating His might, demonstrating his intention in order to reach not only Israel, but also to reach the entire humanity. And from the moment in which men in Israel began to trust in the Lord, Israel began to, began to 
prevailed and prosperity came, security came, the tranquility, the way for the people to go to, toward God, the respect came, the fear, the fear from the other nations went away because they began to see the way in which God would act in the midst of Israel. In the New Testament, God chooses the church. Jesus was sent. Jesus now begins to choose disciples. And now Jesus begins to prepare a small group of men and women and servants faithful to the Lord in order for this same way of thinking, the same understanding, so that this same comprehension that men only will only have peace in men's life, men will ever have a different way of facing the trials, the attacks from the enemy, the sicknesses, the fears, men will only, only be able to overcome this if man has Jesus in their life. So that now Jesus begins to prepare a small group, begins to instruct, begins to show, he begins to relate to them. And while they were in Jesus, Jesus present in their lives, Jesus speaking, they heed into the voice of Jesus, they heed into the teachings of Jesus, that everything could happen, everything wrong could happen in their lives, but they would be firm in the presence of God. Because the only way for man to be able to reach the blessing from God is through Jesus. There's no other way. There's no other one that may connect man to God other than Jesus. And now he begins to form the church. But there comes a moment in which Jesus dies. A prom the prophecy is fulfilled. The disciples knew that. The Jews, together with the Roman Empire, that led, it was the former government in Israel, they imprisoned Jesus, they judged Jesus, they condemned Jesus to death. And now, with the intention to forbid the remaining from continuing what Jesus had started, because Jesus had come to show to men that the way in which for men to be able to reach the blessing from God is not go uh, to go to the law, but now it was through grace. It was through having Jesus as Savior of their lives. And that would upset, it would disrupt all the teaching that had been brought to that, to that point, brought for Moses, but by the kings, by the prophets, and the priests, and it would be contrary to all the teachings that Israel would teach. And because of that, they imprisoned Jesus and forbid the remaining to give continuity to what Jesus had already started. My brethren, when we see the story of man, we will see that the entire history of man, what is preached the most in this world, what is what the world seeks the most is tranquility, is peace. And no one can is able to share this peace. No one is able to cause the world to come into an agreement and that the world peace may be reigning in the world. No matter how much the governors, the authorities, the governing, governments, the leaders come into meetings and conversations and in everything that we see they are trying to do, but they are unable. Because there is something inside of man that prevents, which is fear. And that has followed man, man's entire life. Man always has fear, fear of losing, fear of dying, fear of being robbed, fear of uh, 
the marriage to break up, uh, of the sickness to come, losing the health, everything. Man lives today, and in a moment, this moment, in the same way man lived. I could even say that today is more intense than in the past, because today you have a communication means, everything is life. Everything that happens in the world, the disaster, everything that happened, the, the catastrophes that happen in the world, you can watch it live. And, and that increases even more the fear in man's heart. People are, are even afraid to go out on the street. They're afraid of being robbed. They may be even driving comfortably, respecting the, the traffic lights, respecting the law, the speed limit, but there is someone else that does not respect. This last week, uh, the cop, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, there's a car in high speed and hits the car of the cop and the, the cop lost his life. Last, last Saturday, Sunday, there's no way, humanly speaking, for you to say, I am, I am at peace. My life is filled with peace. That doesn't exist. Not even the rich people. If you have money in the bank, you have very high salaries, good life, good ha house, mansions, but they live in desperation. They live anguished. They live depressed. Why? Because man has not understood they uh, they lack Jesus in their lives. They are lacking Jesus. That's why Je the Lord built the church because the church is an instrument from God to relay this peace. Because the church also goes go through the same trials. We are also subject to everything that happens in the world. We are also subject to infirmities. We are all subject to mistakes, we are subject to accidents. The church never, no, no one ever told the church that, uh, that if you accept Jesus, your life will be comfortable. That doesn't exist, it's, it's not biblical. Jesus said, in the world you have afflictions, but be of good cheer, I overcame, I overcame the world. In the church, from the moment we accept Jesus, we know of what awaits us. But the difference is that the church that faces all this with uh, a different optic, because there is really a way for you to be happy. There's a way for you to have infirmities, but continue to have peace. There is oh, a situation in which the person is in the hospital bed, about to die, but you go to visit that person. You, you yourself are comforted when you leave. You go there to try to bring a word of uh, support and embrace, but you leave there feeling that you, you are the one who were embraced. That's what is faith. That's what is to have peace. The person is unemployed, is in difficulty in, a, in their daily lives. But when you go to church, the person is there glorifying God and waiting for the Lord to open the door, waiting for the provision from God, waiting for the Lord to lay His hands and say, oh, you are making an effort, you are seeking, that's the door they have opened for you. So there is, yes, there is a way for man to live in the world in which we are, but in, in a different way than everything that we see up there. In desperation, anguish, suffering, disappointment, failure, because the Church of Christ is as blessed. The Church of Christ is happy because God is present. That's why Jesus, in this moment, he says, when he comes in the midst of the servants there, Jesus had died, and the disciples now, they were with Jesus. Their fear was, if they kill the Master, if, if Jesus Himself, our Savior, 
Was that crucified? I saw him being buried. If they kill him, how about us? What they are going to do with us? Imagine the fear that existed in the heart of those servants. That's why I say the church is not free from the difficult moments of this life. We are subject to all of this. The disciples that were with Jesus three days before, they were now going through a very difficult moment. So much fear. They were in a house with the, the doors closed. Imagine what, what they were talking about. Lord, have mercy. Deliver our soul. We trust in Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Give a blessing. And the word says that Jesus, when they were there, all, all there gathered except one. Thomas was not there at this moment. So then Jesus appears. Jesus on the third day, he re resurrects with a glorified body. Jesus appears to dis the disciples, to the church. And they were there in a house gathered, and Jesus appears in their midst. He didn't even knock at the door. If he knocked at the door, they would all die of fear. They were there already in desperation that anxiety being sought after by the Roman soldiers. Imagine if the Jesus knocked at the door, they would all faint. They're all four. But the word of the Lord says that they, the Lord appeared in that midst. He went through the wall and went to the door and appeared in their midst and, say, and said, Peace be with you. I can imagine the face of those men when they saw Jesus. And they received this word, Peace be with you. Imagine, my brethren, that's what God wants to teach to men. That's what God is coming to relay and bring to our lives. That's why the church of the Lord needs to be different. That's why the servant of God needs to be different. Because He is the one who relays this peace. We, can, we relay the peace of Jesus. The Lord has chosen us to bring salvation to men, to be preachers of this gospel, of this word, this wonderful eternal gospel. What God has left for us is a teaching. The only way for us to have a direction of how to please the Lord is through the word. And Jesus chose me. He chose you who entered here. And tonight, the peace that he gave to the disciples there 2,000 years ago is the same peace is maintained in the midst of the church. Because that's it, what God wants to do in our lives. We go through our own fears and our trials, but we face all of this in a different way. Aware that the Lord is in control. We've had an experience in one of our church near Miami. A lady met the Lord. She had a sickness where the muscles did not work. You remember this, Marcus? Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. And the disease, disease started from the defeat up, and she was baptized, she accepted the Lord. She would go to the church, and the disease got worse, and she could not walk anymore. The church began to go to her house. The same service was repeated in her house. Same songs, same message. When she could no longer go to the services, would go to her house to relay what was the will of God. And when she could no longer move, the only thing that she could do was to speak. In very difficulty, she was able to speak. And one day, the day before her death, she asked to make a glorification to the Lord. She could only move uh, her vocal cords, only the voice. The only muscles that she could move were here. Nothing else would move. She made a prayer as if she were, she had the, the strong strength of her entire life. And she praised the Lord because she had found peace, because she had found salvation, 
because she had found joy. She had found a way to overcome what was taken away her body. But she found Jesus. The following day she died. That's the testimony of a soul that is about to lose everything but never lose the faith in the Lord. And that's what the Lord does in the life of man. And that's what Jesus wants to relate to us when he said, peace be with you. Thomas was not there. Eight days later, Jesus appears once again. But before this, they, the disciples told to Thomas, Thomas, you missed the service. Well, how wonderful. We were there and Jesus appeared. And Thomas said, Jesus, Jesus, yes, uh, Jesus was there. It was a blessing. The service was wonderful. And you missed it. And Thomas said, uh, I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. I'll only believe if I put my hands on uh, the marks of his hands, on the, of the nails. That, that's the only way for me to believe. Eight days later, in another service, same thing happened. The doors were closed. The disciples inside. And Jesus appears once again. And he said once again, peace to you. And my brother, why Jesus said peace to you? Because that's the assurance that we, he wants us to have. He says, do not be worried. Peace to you. It means that I will be with you. Salvation will be with you. The blessing of deliverance, everything that you need will be with you. Do not be afraid of what the world offers you. Do not be afraid. Because I will be with you. So then Jesus turns to Thomas and said, Thomas, you see my hands? Put your finger here on my hands. And surely Thomas put the finger there. What do you see on my hands? So then Jesus, Jesus asked Thomas to put the finger and he also said, look at my hands. You know why? Because man, in order to believe in Jesus, to let go of this, this state of unbelief, I don't believe in God. This is a uh, fantasy. Jesus didn't exist. This is a fairy tale. Man needs to touch in Jesus. Man needs, needs to touch on the marks of Jesus' hand. Man needs to touch on the side that Jesus has left in the church, in, in this life. The only way for man to touch Jesus is to touch on his body. Who is the body of Christ? It's the church. The only way for man to see the marks and the signs of Jesus is when man has a contact with the church. When man begins to live in the midst of the church, when he begins to have an inti intimacy with the church, is when man is be able to overcome all incredulity, every human reason, his ego, his laziness, uh, everything that attached man to be to this world, the fear of being called a uh, square, or fear of losing his family, because sometimes men do not accept the Lord. He does not open himself to the Lord because he's afraid of accepting Jesus. And, and But when man enters to the church and he touches in Jesus, he begins to touch on the brethren. He begins to live with the brethren. He begins to live this warmth that only Holy Spirit can uh, relate to the church. He begins to see the signs of Jesus. He begins to see the miracles of Jesus. The Word says that the signs would follow those who believe in Jesus. That's the only way for men to overcome is exactly what happened to Thomas. Thomas even said, I will only believe if I see. But now Jesus said, Thomas, you need to touch touch on my side. You know, see, Thomas? Yeah, that's true. You see? That's true, Thomas. I died for you. I died for the church. I died for your life. I died so you would be able to have salvation and so that you'll be able to overcome your incredulity and open up your heart and begin to live, live in my path. 
And when Thomas saw that, he saw the mark on the side of Jesus. He saw the miracle on the side of Jesus, what we see every day. And that's what brings peace to us. To know that the blessing of God is upon our lives. And to know the miracle of God is upon our lives. And to know that any, at any moment, the sick, without infirmity or with infirmity, it doesn't matter. At any moment, our names are going to be called. And we'll get away from this world. And we'll be forever in the arms of our Savior. But Brandon, that's what causes us to praise the Lord in the house of the Lord. That's what causes us to have gratitude. Because Jesus overcame death. Jesus overcame all things. And when Thomas hears this, he says, and Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God. The only way for men to believe in the Lord is when man begins to live in the midst of the church. Because here is where the Holy Spirit is working in us. And that's the Holy Spirit that causes us to be able to reach this peace. And this is the Holy Spirit that gives us the strength. Not a human strength, not the physical strength, but a spiritual strength that comes from above towards us, down to us, to reach our hearts. That's what faith is. Faith is when man believes on things that he doesn't see. And Jesus says, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's who are blessed. That's why you need to be blessed. That's why you need to be happy. Because you, you're not seeing Jesus physically, but by faith. You're believing that He exists. And that you can also overcome your difficulties if you begin to live in, believe in Jesus. May God bless us. Let us hear a song.
Vamos lá todos. the Lord has shown that the presence of the Lord is real in this place through the praise and the glorification of the church the Lord manifests operating the actions of justice in our behalf to each one of us today, tonight you are <coughs> we are target of the mercy and the love of God the Lord also has shown a woman who entered here she knows the gospel, she knows the church, she knows what she wants to do. And it's interesting that she only comes to the service when she feels that is necessary. She misses many services. And she knows that this inconstancy has harmed her spiritual life, especially her faith. The lack of Jesus does that. The lack of Jesus does that. Oh, but does it mean that I need to go to the church? I need to be in the church? The word that says that where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be. The Lord, Jesus appeared in the midst of the disciples. The church gathered. There was one missing. And this one, his faith was shaken. The one who missed his faith was compromised because he didn't see Jesus. But when he appeared and he saw the hands, the size, the miracle, he began to believe. And he began to say, My Lord and my God, the servant that has this with the Lord that calls himself a servant needs to be present in the house of the Lord. But today, the Lord, tonight, the Lord is giving you, you the sister, a new opportunity. He's giving yet another opportunity, renewing the commitment between her and him and proposing to her, here, you want me to take control of your life? Open up your heart. Take on the same commitment that I'm taking on with you. So here is a message from the Lord. You who entered here, you have been absent. I know that there are many things or we have our commitments, your necessities, but the spiritual side is much more important than everything in the world. And the Lord also spoke about a man that is more or less in the same situation. He's weakened spiritually, cold spiritually, and knows about the fear, the danger that he's going through in the situation of not going to heaven. A man is warm. Warm is even worse. The, the Bible says, I will 
throw you up from my mouth. A man uh, is warm, is, is not afraid of anything. Today I go, tomorrow I, I don't. That's the person that is warm. A person that thinks that he's in the blessing, but he's not. The Bible says that that person will be rejected. And tonight it is the warmth of the Holy Spirit. The blessed of the Holy Spirit is at your reach. If you want to seek a renewal and commitment with the Lord, open up your heart and allow God to inhabit. We're, look, we're going to stand out and have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we're blessed, Lord, because you are our, our direction. We're nothing, Lord, without you. That's why we are happy people. Because we have this loving God that gives us the peace that we are seeking, that the world does not give. We thank you, Lord, for the joy of serving God, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Because your people is waiting for you. We are anxious to be with you in eternity. We thank you, Lord, because you have sustained us to this point, you have kept us standing, you have sustained us, given us strength. And what we feel when we praise you, Lord, you come to us, come to our level with your ears, Lord, and give us victory, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word that brings joy to our heart, that brings peace to us. Blessed be your holy name, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, at this moment, we ask that this service that was scheduled in heaven, this, the song sang, every prayer that was made, your word, that you remain in our hearts, that we may never leave your house, Lord, in the same way we entered, but that we may leave this place happy, with our hearts rejoicing in your presence, operate salvation, reproach, Lord, any, any incredulity and spiritual coldness, and that your spirit may have access to each one who entered here tonight, and that you may operate a transformation, operate salvation, Lord. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, you pour out upon us <coughs> now and forevermore. Amen. Church may be seated. If you have any desires, a prayer, we are here at your disposal to pray for you. I'd like to remind the brethren that Thursday, once again, we're going to be here at 8 o'clock p.m., our prayer service, our service of intercession to the Lord, so that the Lord may continue to operate in our midst. And a peace of the Lord to everyone. <laughs>